And she came with the same type game, the type of girl giving out the fake cell phone the name. Big Fang. I actually made that track, this factory track, in 1998 of October. You know, I was just in the crib making beats and beat mode, you know, um, and happened to just stumble on this Aretha Franklin record that I had in all the crates of records. I was just like, you know, I just like, hmm. Read the Frank, one of the, you know, I started listening to the album for like a couple of days, you know, and uh, I really got into the record even before I sampled it. I was like, I, I just wanted to listen to it and kind of get a, you know, get a feel for the vibe of, of, of the record and, and her and, and her singing and her, and her soul, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, I sat with it, listened to it, and I studied it, and, um, you know, Put some drums behind it, started chopping up the samples every day. Um, I did it a couple of different ways before I came up with the final, the final actual uh, version. With that, I let some friends hear it, you know, they were like, you know, I was like, what do you think? And they were just like, yo, the beat is hot, you know what I'm saying? The beat is hot. But they were like, well, who are you gonna get to rock on? I'm like, I have no clue. I really had no idea who was gonna actually ride on the beat. I tried to play a low key but couldn't keep it down. Asked the dance and she was like, yo, I'm We recorded that song uh, in, I think it was Platinum Island, I think it was Platinum Island, Platinum Island in Manhattan, or if not Platinum Island, I think it was the cutting room in Manhattan at the studio at the time. Um, yeah, most was there with me. Um, he heard the track, he was just like, fell in love with the beat, he was like, yo, I've actually played a couple more tracks from a little known fact. Um, I, he actually um, purchased about, I'd say about eight uh, different tracks from me. It was not just the two tracks he had on lap on both sides. And he actually had about six more tracks that he purchased that nobody really knows about. And I don't know what he did with them, but they were like, if you thought those two were some great records, you have to hear the other six. The other six were some, like amazing, like really amazing. The actual song was called was a Aretha Franklin, it was called One Step Ahead. I know I can't afford to stop for one moment Cause I'm just out of reach of your finger tip. Um, You know, I just listened to like the beginning of, of the record, you know, a little bit of the middle, and just tried to get the most powerful parts of the song. And, and place it in certain, you know, certain parts of the, of the actual, um, the actual track, so I can get the, 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 the maximum effect before the MC even got on the track. And at the time, I was still putting stuff on tape. It wasn't even CDs. I was putting stuff on on tape. So I put it on tape, all the different versions, and I had listened to them back to back. And I was like, okay, I like the fourth one. You know, I like the fourth one. And I was like, so I just, I ran with the fourth version, and the other three, I just kind of just scrapped. You know. Just, <laughs> You know, it was an experience, man. It was an experience working with the guy. Um, he's been uh, considered one of hip hop's greatest 100 records uh, ever made and in hip hop. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that when I was up in, inside my, my, my room, just by myself, just working on, on the track, you know? It's, it's kind of bugged out. You're viewing the Ayatollah interview for the Kiai on Not Factor.